Hey everyone, Dan from On One here. There's been a tremendous amount of excitement about our announcement of On One Resize AI. It's really the next generation of genuine fractals, and it's going to make resizing your images and making them look great for printing even better than ever. Now, one of the questions we get a lot about is when do I want to use this in my workflow? And it's going to be the same place you've used resize in the past. It's going to be very late at your workflow, just before you're ready to size it and ready to print it after you've done all your other work. It's kind of the opposite of on one no noise. No noise you use at the very beginning of your workflow to get rid of the noise. You'll do all the rest of your work, and then you use resize at the tail end to prepare for printing. All right, now today I'm using it as a standalone app, but you can use it as a plugin to Lightroom or Photoshop or many other photo editors out there. And very soon it'll also be integrated in on one photo rock 2022. To open your photos, simply click the open photos button, or you can drag and drop your photos into the window. That's what I'm gonna do. I have a whole folder of photos on my desktop that I've done my editing on and I'm ready to print. So I'm just gonna drag this ready to print folder into resize. Now at the bottom, you'll see a new film strip that shows you all of the photos in your folder that you're working on. It'll tell you their original pixel dimensions and what the resize dimensions are going to be as well. Now keep in mind what we're working on today is a pre-release version of resize. It's not quite the final version. So the UI and the experience might change a little bit before the final version. Now, if you're an existing resize owner, you're gonna love that new film strip. The other thing you're really gonna love is that we've combined the pixel dimensions and document size pane together over here on the right side to his new single photo size pane. It shows both the original size and the after size in pixels and whatever you're trying to output in. Another big change, and this is really important if you're doing batch processing, is you can now control how you're gonna resize it. Now, normally, most people are going to resize using the dimensions options, which gives you a fixed width and height and resolution that you're trying to scale your photo to. And that kind of works hand in hand with the crop tool to be able to crop your photo to specific paper sizes. But sometimes you need to batch process to a specific width or height. And you can now do that using the resize two options. You can now scale also to the long edge, the short edge, the width, the height, megapixels or percent. In this example, I've got photos that are all different sizes and different orientations. Some are portraits, some are landscapes, some are squarish, some are more panoramic. I happen to have a printer that can print 17 inches wide on roll stock paper. So I want all of them to be 17 inches on their short edge. And then the other dimension is just going to be natural based on the dimensions of the photo, or the proportions of the photo. So I'll just change my resize to the short edge. And then I'll just type in 17 inches. There we go. Now it's going to scale that photo. And because I have all of the other ones selected, if I simply hit the sync button, it's going to apply that same size to all the other photos. And they're all going to get scaled to 17 inches on the short side and then whatever they happen to be on the long side. The other thing I should adjust now is my resolution, the basically how many pixels per inch I need for my printing device. Now I can type in any value I want into the resolution field, but there's also a bunch of presets that are built in that help you find the right one for your printer paper combination. So I'm going to print on an Epson. So I'm going to pick 360 pixels per inch. I could also pick the resize method. I could use the new resize AI, which is obviously the one that we're going to use, or I could also use the old genuine fractals or bicubic methods as well. And I could adjust any parameters that I need to for that photo. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one of those photos. I've already synced these settings across all of them, so when I go to another photo, it'll pick up the same settings. Let's go ahead and zoom in and I'll show you guys what the results look like here. So here's the original pixels, and in a second, you'll see the resize algorithm is applied, and you'll see how much sharper and how much more detail we're gonna get out of that photo. Let me just pan over here a little bit. And I'm gonna turn the preview on and off so you can kind of see before and after. So that's before, that's the original pixels, just basically magnified, and then the results after the new resize AI algorithm is applied. This is without any sharpening. I could still turn on sharpening and adjust that to taste as well. I'm gonna go down and use our progressive sharpening, and I'm gonna adjust it just a little bit kind of based on personal taste. And of course I can toggle just that pane on and off to adjust it independently. And again, because we're working in the batch mode, hitting the sync button is gonna apply that same sharpening to all those other photos for me as well. All right, now once I've got everything set, I can have two choices of how I want to output this. I could just hit the export button and the familiar export dialog comes up. I can choose how I want to name these new files, where I want them to go, what file type and color space I want them to be. If I want to add a watermark or control which metadata is embedded or not, all those options live here inside of export. 
but I happen to have my own printer. Rather than sending it to a lab where I have any files, I can print them on my own. So I'm just gonna hit the cancel button and I'll hit the print button instead. This will load up the print dialog. And now I can choose which printer to print to, what size of paper to print on, the resolution, my color management, all the options I need for print. And now I can batch print all of those photos out on my raw printer right away. All right, there you go. That's kind of a quick tour of the new On1 Resize AI, how you'd use it in your workflow and the right time to use it in your workflow. Thanks for watching.